Hey there, I'm Jeff Trojan with Playmates Toys. Jeff, we're here at Toy Fair and you're celebrating 40 years of TMNET. Like, what's it been like with working with this franchise for 40 years? It's fantastic, obviously, to, to work with Turtles for 40 years. Yeah, it's uh, 1984 is the 40th anniversary of the comic book, so Paramount will be uh, celebrating that all next year in 2024. We're going to be badging a lot of our products with that as we release what I'm standing in front of, the classic product, which is retro product from the 88 to the 90s Turtles. Now you, now, you guys were a stranger to the retro product. You guys did a couple of uh, smaller releases years ago before the Turtle Wave hit, and that was very successful. What have you learned from that way that you applied to the new one? Uh, well, turtles are evergreen, literally. They're, they're, uh, it's collectors out there constantly for all of it, and for different waves of product. You know, some fans were, you know, the 88 to 91 turtles. Um, some were, hey, the first Hanson movies, you know, were the turtles I grew up with and loved. We released those this time around, Spring 23, and we're seeing chatter online, hey, no love for the 2003 turtles. You know, that fan is now 20 years old also, 28 years old or so. And uh, so that kind of stuff is coming out too. There's, there's a generation of turtles for everybody. It's, it's one of the few IPs that can exist and span generations with different iterations artistically or story-wise and can still find an audience. Sure, domestically and worldwide. I mean, there were artistic iterations of the Turtles, you know, from Japan and different ones in Europe and things like that. So, And, and what the creative community has done, you know, DeviantArt and other places, there, there's always a fan of the Turtle illustrating them in, in interesting ways, 3D and 2D. Now, as, as, a, as a child of the 80s and early 90s, uh, Playmates was a, a big brand. And I, I've been told you guys are still owned. You haven't been bought out or haven't been sold. You're still original. Not the original owner, but you're still the, your same company. You're not owned by some, like, you're not owned by Hasbro or some other corporate conglomerate. Correct. Yeah. Playmates uh, was originally a manufacturer, uh, an OEM manufacturer. Once we were the largest producer of Barbie dolls in the world. This is a history I've learned, not that I lived. Um, <laughs> and... Then they were a promotional doll company when they got in the promotional business, had a few successes there, and then brought this oddball thing, Turtles, out that uh, all the other toy companies had passed on. There's a lot of documentaries out there, I'm sure you've seen them. Um, and then they, they funded this, uh, you know, this, this quirky comic book came out, and then we funded the first uh, animation, and the rest, history. history, history. Yeah. You guys have used the original base molds, or like, or as close as you can. Can you kind of, for the fan out there who's like, are these the original, original molds? Are they copies of the original molds? Are they modernized a little bit? Can you talk a little bit about that process? As, as best I can. Don't hold me skew by skew. Right. But, but to search, like you said, we've used some of the molds over the years. We've gone back and released a classic this or a box set of that. So some of the molds exist. As we laid out the line, the line here of what to do and what we think we should release, we had to go find the molds, see what we had records of, uh, see what condition they were in. Sometimes it was polished, uh, a piece of the mold, all the molds, um, or it, a piece had to be replaced or recreated, um, and that's been done to some extent. But for the most part, all of it is true to the originals. Now, a question you might know about the answer is that like Paramount is currently the IP holder of Ninja Turtles. That always that wasn't always the case. Is that proved difficult when you go back to a retro line that existed in the eighties and nineties and figure out what who owned what character? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think it's difficult at all. You know, I, I can't speak to it legally, but. Paramount pretty much, Viacom at that time, right. Paramount, whatever they call themselves at, at any time uh, and how they've shifted their businesses, but they bought everything from Mirage Studios. So as far as I know, they, they own every bit of publishing, every bit of uh, animation, every, all the character models that were created by Eastman and Laird under Mirage Publishing or Mirage Studios. Um, so uh, it, it transferred over. Now it takes, there were some guest stars in the Turtles through the years um, or some co-branding that probably would have to be relitigated. Wasabi Jimbo, right? Like he's an example. Right. He's an independent character owned by a separate person who has worked with us uh, in the past and even, I think, within the last decade, um, and a great fan, char fan favorite character. Right. Right. So that's a different ownership. Um, and obviously we did cross promotions with, uh, in the past, I forget if in the past we did wrestling, but you know, you have your Star Trek Turtles and things like that. Fortunately, still under the Paramount umbrella, so that was, that was easy. And, and other characters, we did Universal Monsters in the past with Turtles. We haven't returned to that one, but you know, uh, obviously if you wanted to recreate those, it would take a separate conversation with a separate entity. But for the most part, Turtles as you know it, 99.9% .9 transferred over from the Mirage Purses. There's a huge line of the, the toys from the 80s and early 90s. I mean, how do you guys go about deciding what you're going to tackle, like, just, just like maybe for this wave and maybe get something? That, like, I saw the original Transformer uh, Turtles. I saw the ones where the pizzas fly out of the chest. And I'm seeing the ones on the table behind you of the original ones. How do you guys go about deciding? Because it was such a huge brand, huge brand, and so many characters to do in each wave. Like, how do you guys take us into that, like, thought process? 
I mean, essentially we have records of what were the best sellers, what were the most popular, whatever. You know, what were the most popular mainline figures, what were the most popular extensions, what were the most popular vehicles, what were the most popular deluxe turtles, like you said, with, uh, with, with features inside of them. And we look to that and that becomes part of the line. Uh, sometimes it's online chatter, you know, who's talking about what or asking about what. You know, sometimes it can be, um, you know, what's selling best on the secondary market. Now that we've done that, it's like, oh, let's release, uh, what was who was the cat burglar? Um, or Hotspot or Scratch or anything like that. We haven't so been that mercenary, you know, but uh, it really it's just what was popular at the time. And, and the weird little extensions that didn't get much love, you know, we're not itching to put those back out. Now, so one of the things that I never had as a kid that I always wanted was the Turtle Blimp. But you guys have done some vehicles before in the classic line. Do you, can you tease us? Do you have any plans to do like the Blimp, uh, the Technodrome, the, the original? I think you guys did the original Turtle Van for a short period of time too. But any plans to do the other vehicles in the set? I mean, there's a pizza shooter vehicle as well. Yeah. Well, you're a good guesser, so I won't keep too much a secret. <laughs> um, but yeah, in, in the past, uh, I don't know if it was Amazon or Walmart or some collector, in the past five years or so, uh, we did the pizza van again. We did the turtle blimp. Uh, it, it didn't get too much traction. You know, some people have totally fond memories. I missed of it. it. I, did, I should have gotten it because I never, I wanted it as a kid. I never got it. I have to do it, get it now. Yeah. But things like, uh, yeah, we know what were the most popular ones, the, the pizza, pizza throwing vehicle, uh, the party van. The party wagon might come out again, um, as was going to the, the pizza tosser. But when we looked at the movie and they worked in a great version of what well, is a combination party van and uh, pizza tosser in this, what we call the pizza fire van. I mean, we're like, all right, let's put the collectible stuff back and focus on the movie for that feature anyway. Um, things like the Technodrome, we're like, uh, it's being considered for some for bringing back. That was our second most popular playset of all time. So I'm like, we could probably find a home, especially under the 40th anniversary branding uh, for that. So certain things are still not announced. I feel like it is different now in 23 with, with with the toy industry in general because now you're fighting for shelf space, something I don't think retailers had to worry about in the late 80s or later, not, not as badly anyway as they do now when you have to compete with other things on the shelf. We didn't have to fight for retail space as much. Everybody had a Toys R Us where the smallest smallest lines got a chance, um, you know, new launches got a chance, Toys R Us wanted to have every big toys had a chance, different uh, toys had a chance, um, different price points. I mean, what happened over the decades is just that um, it became the mass merchandisers, you know, Walmart and Target, um, and it's a portion of their stores. Uh, the pricing model is different, especially with promotional toys, and so we're fighting for that in terms of shelf space. Now, if you're the number one toy, great. Your, your branding grows and shrinks by season. Um, so it's always a competition. It's a big industry, so we're, we're happy when it works and you're expanding. And you have to be frugal and focused uh, when, when your space is contracting. And I think that's always been the case.